Even before the supply chain upheaval, few Americans looked forward to purchasing a vehicle, and the chip shortage caused dealerships to increase prices by the tens of thousands. However, if Ford CEO Jim Farley has his way, purchasing a Ford electric vehicle in the future may be a lot easier. So, if you haven't looked at a Ford lately, look again. Here at Tech Addicts, you'll get to know why Ford is declaring a war against its dealer and all updates needed. So what are we waiting for? Let's look into the matter. Although Ford Motor Company is being sued over its electric vehicle certification program for dealers, around two-thirds of its U.S. retail network has committed to the plans, and some are discovering that prices may be lower than stated. At last week's Automotive News Congress, Ford CEO Jim Farley announced that 1,920 dealerships had agreed to adhere to the strict new sales rules and invest extensively in EV chargers and training. He stated that 1,659 dealers opted for the more expensive Certified Elite program, which demands an expenditure of up to $1.2 million. In comparison, 261 dealers opted for the less costly Certified program that requires an investment of up to $500,000 but limits annual EV sales to 25. To compete with Tesla's market dominance in electric vehicle sales, the automaker, which has approximately 3,000 dealers in the U.S., sees the modifications as essential. According to Experience EV registration data, Ford is the second largest EV brand in the United States. What's the current plan for Ford to be ahead in the EV game? Ford has begun preliminary pre-production at a new plant in Dearborn, Michigan for its electrified F-150 Lightning pickup truck. As part of a bigger restructuring of its EV and legacy operations, Ford Motor stated that it intends to build more than 2 million electric vehicles annually and create a 10% adjusted operating profit margin by 2026. Both goals represent significant enhancements over the status quo for the firm. In 2021, Ford's adjusted operating profit was 7.3%. While it sold about 27,140 Mustang Mach-E all-electric crossovers in the United States alone, it only managed to shift over 64,000 worldwide that year. As part of its plan for the future, Ford will restructure its operations to create two distinct divisions for its electric and internal combustion engine businesses. Investors were pleased with the plans, driving the automaker stock price up to 8.4% on Wednesday to $18.10 per share. The stock price of Ford has fallen by around 13% so far this year. We commend Ford's move to take the first crucial step to optimize the competing missions of the EV ICE companies, Morgan Stanley analyst Adam Jones wrote in a note to investors on Wednesday. Several other established car makers may have similar plans, and Ford was the first to announce this officially. To keep up with what is projected to be fast adoption in the nascent market this decade, Ford and other big automakers are racing to establish production capacity for EVs. They want to avoid playing catch-up with Tesla, the market leader in the EV business, so they're trying to get out in front of the demand curve. Ford CEO Jim Farley remarked during a Wednesday morning event, We want to defeat the old players and we want to beat the new ones. Farley said that Ford anticipates slashing $3 billion from its structural expenses, primarily from its traditional internal combustion engine sector, to attain the 10% margin. Specifically, it intends to raise EV sales volumes and decrease EV construction material prices. Ford's plans are consistent with its main competitor in the area, General Motors. Last year, the Detroit car maker announced goals to increase profits from 12 to 14 percent by 2030 and to increase yearly revenue by 20 percent. It also intends to expand its manufacturing facilities to create 2 million electric vehicles in China and North America by 2025. GM has yet to reveal any plans to separate the financial results of its electric car division and its conventional vehicle division, which were separated mainly during the latter half of 2019. According to the company, there were no current or foreseeable intentions to dissolve the corporation's electric vehicle division. The automaker wants to increase battery capacity, shorten its supply chain, and use lithium iron phosphate, or LFP, batteries for its EVs as part of its $50 billion effort to scale its battery electric portfolio through 2026. Several automakers are turning to LFP batteries, less expensive cell chemistry, to stay competitive in the expanding electric vehicle market. Ford claims the changes will help the company stay on pace to achieve its near-term target of increasing annual EV manufacturing to 600,000 units by 2023 and 2 million units by 2026. According to the corporation, 70% of the battery capacity it will need by 2026 has already been sourced. 
Bloomberg cites anonymous individuals who claim that 8,000 jobs will need to be lost for the company to meet its EV manufacturing goals. On Thursday, Ford executives avoided directly addressing layoffs during a conference with analysts and media. Still, they stressed the importance of speed and agility for the company's battery electric Model E business. Batteries that use lithium iron phosphate. Ford has announced that it will begin using LFP batteries, in addition to the nickel cobalt manganese or NCM chemistry, now used to power its electric vehicles. LFP could pave the way for the widespread adoption of electric cars because it is less expensive than competing technologies. Ford's Mach-E SUVs in North America will be equipped with LFP battery packs from CATL, the world's largest battery provider. Uh, with F-150 Lightning pickup trucks receiving the same packages in the first half of 2024. Although LFP batteries are more affordable than NCM, their lower energy density makes them less effective. Although these standard range batteries offer consumers many years of operation with minimal loss of range after many charge cycles, Drake says, the chemistry may seem like an odd option to support two of Ford's most powerful vehicles. Customers in the business world who need to charge their devices frequently will benefit from this. According to Drake, Ford can save between 10 and 15 percent on its battery material prices by using LFP, all while decreasing its dependency on essential minerals like nickel and cobalt. Even though it has inked non-binding MOUs with lithium suppliers Liontown Resources and Rio Tinto, the corporation still needs to reveal how many of its EVs will employ LFP chemistry. Batteries and their suppliers Ford added that in order to achieve its late 2023 production objective, it has increased its contracts with NCM battery providers. To meet the demand for the Ford Mach-E and E-Transit van, LG Energy will increase the production of its NCM batteries by 50%. To meet Ford's growing demand for NCM cells, SK-ON has ramped up production at its Georgia factory. It will continue to supply battery packs for the F-150 Lightning and E-Transit from its facility in Hungary through 2023. The Blue Oval City Complex in Stanton, Tennessee, and two EV battery plants in Glendale, Kentucky, are all part of the $11.4 billion joint venture that Ford and SK-On finalized. The ability to produce battery cells, as Drake put it, is the backbone of our EV company. Since we wanted to increase battery production at a rapid rate, while maintaining consistent volume and low long-term cost, we source lithium and nickel directly from reliable suppliers. Ford's first-generation EVs have been well-received by consumers, and there are encouraging signs of growth in EV demand as the automaker works to implement its new supply chain. Ford is attempting to remove hurdles to entry, including charging, cost, and the EV customer purchasing experience, in order to further increase demand. This is our chance to break into a new market and gain a dedicated following of customers who will help us expand our business. The goal is to give future EV buyers the greatest possible experience by integrating the benefits of online purchasing with Ford's knowledge, size, and proximity to our dealers. The best never rest. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching.